Man, we're at Louisiana State Penitentiary at Angola, largest maximum security prison in America. Well, we have about 5,145 inmates. We, uh, we're 18,000 acres in land mass, and so we also don't keep inmates hardly with less than 50 years, so this is real hardcore prison. It's very, very civilized. In Louisiana, life means life. With that said, about 95, 96 percent of our total inmate population have a very realistic chance of dying here at Angola. So Warden Kane has had to come up with uh, very ingenious ways to manage that type of population. Uh, there is no idleness. If you're medically able to work, you do work. And there's no gang activity here in the prison. Uh, it's a very, very uh, unique situation. Every day they have a job. If you're medically able to work, you do work. And a lot of prisons across the country don't do that. But uh, it's just a great deal of common sense because if idleness is a terrible entity in any setting, particularly a, a prison and for sure a maximum security prison. To give you some idea of how large Angola is, if you took Main Prison that we just went by and you moved it outside the gates of Angola, you'd still have the largest maximum security prison in Louisiana with one of our housing areas. This is one of our, one of four dormitories in the ASH unit and uh, a, number of, uh, a number of months ago, uh, with budget cuts, we uh, went to double bunking. Historically, we've always had about 65 uh, offenders per dorm. Now we're running about 85, 86. And uh, this is a trustee dormitory. And, uh, you know, it, it speaks volumes for the way uh, the prison is run. Uh, we've got uh, Miss Louisiana in the, basically in the guts of Maine prison. And uh, very few prisons in the country would probably venture to do that. But uh, thanks to our uh, administration, our security staff, this is a very safe, secure prison. This is the uh, lethal injection uh, area, Camp F, Louisiana State Penitentiary. Um, this is the lethal injection table. The uh, offender will start in a cell block area and will be escorted out by um, six guys, strapped down team, as we call it. He'll, they'll escort him in. He'll be in shackles and restraints. And they'll escort him in and lay him on the table. And then each uh, officer has a responsibility, uh, one on each arm, one on the head, one on each leg, and one down at the end of the table. And each officer has a responsibility to strap his arms down. And then, as you see, all the straps go across his body. His legs will go here. His legs will also be shackled. And then the two shoulder straps over the top. So that's pretty hard to get out of. I've been the guinea pig several times on the practice, so, and I've tried and it's very difficult to move around. It's not a good feeling. He's uh, extracted off of death row. He's brought over here to the death row holding cell uh, about 12 hours prior to the execution. All throughout the day, he has visits with his family members. He has visits with uh, his spiritual advisors. Uh, the uh, warden will have the uh, last meal with the inmate, usually around 3, 3.30 in the afternoon, something like that. Uh, the uh, family members, uh, the inmate family members are asked to leave this area uh, a little bit sooner than that. Uh, it's an emotional time, and Warden Kane does something different than any other prison warden that has to deal with executions. Yeah. He will allow the inmate and the inmate's mother to embrace, and he says he doesn't do that for the inmate, he does that for the inmate's mom. Yeah, I was asking if you had a service in the Oh, yeah, every night. This is our uh, one of our interfaith chapels. These uh, chapels are built through uh, outside donations, and they're built through the Louisiana Prison Chapel Foundation. And uh, as Warden Kane says, this, they're very important to us because these are uh, one of the only places that an inmate can go and truly be free while they're in prison.
things that uh, has happened with the uh, moral rehabilitation programs here in Angola is that uh, with all the uh, graduate uh, ministers that you have, they've uh, started their own churches a lot. So uh, there's some sort of religious activity here uh, just about every day and uh, just about every evening of the, of the week, seven days a week. Correction means correct deviant behavior, and that's really what we do. We don't torture and torment. You know, we're kind of good at the lettuce, many of the make us, and it's Burger King, they have it their way. But uh, that's, a, that's what we stand for, that's what we do, and that's the kind of prison it is. And so they're worthy of the visit because they are well behaved, and it's a moral place. And uh, we do have a Bible college here, and so it's about changing lives. So if one of them gets out, he doesn't hurt you again. It's about victims, really. Welcome to Angola. This is KLSP radio station 91.7. The incarceration station, the only one in the nation, the one that kicks behind the bricks. Okay? <laughs> that is not just, <laughs> that's not just a slogan, that's an actual truth. Mm -hmm. This is the only radio station in the world that is ran by offenders. I myself am an inmate here at Louisiana State Penitentiary. This is my prison job. This is what I do five days a week. We have four of the DJs here that work along with me. We work around the clock. KLSP is a 24-hour seven day, days a week radio station. We're on the air, live, all over these 18,000 acres. This is what we do. We play m music for all the guys here in Angola. Mm -hmm. The guys that are in cell blocks, on death row, in the dormitories, all the guys here in Angola can tune in at KLSP any time of the day, any time of the night. It's 11.35 a.m. on this Monday, and we are blessed to have Miss Louisiana here at the radio station with us today. And she just stopped by, guys, just to say hello to you. She has a beautiful smile, and I'm sure it's going to emanate all through the radio waves. So <laughs> just sit back and invite somebody to come to the radio and listen to something that is going to be said to uplift you, just to give you a little bit of hope and to push you a little further down the road. Man, just to encourage you here today. Miss Louisiana. Hi, everyone. So excited to be here. This is my first time to Angola. And I'm so excited to be able to visit this and to see how everything runs and works. And I was talking earlier to our tour guides about how incredible it is, the program that you have here, because it's so different from everywhere else. And it's such an encouraging program to see people who are striving to make their lives better, no matter if they're in here for life or if they're in here for you know a shorter sentence, but to be able to see them to pursue education, to build work ethic and seeing them better themselves as a person. And so that's very encouraging. And I send prayers and blessings to each and every one of you. Okay, we certainly thank you for that. Uh, as Miss Louisiana last term shared, uh, she shared a theme that she went around Louisiana during her term and I, and I was told that you all are supposed to have a theme. You can actually what yours is? It's our uh, platform, and mine is Heart for the Arts. I've been dancing since I was about three years old, and my aunt owns a dance studio in Monroe. So now that kind of was what got me into the pageant system, was having a talent and having someone that pushed me to pursue that. And so now I'm able to instill that in my students as a dance teacher and carry that message with me throughout my reign as Miss Louisiana when I talk to children. And that is to pursue your dreams, no matter if someone tells you that you can or can't do it, if you're too tall, if you're not pretty enough, no matter what it is, to go ahead and pursue your dreams and you will be successful. What brought you to Angola? You know, of all the places to go, you know, why, why did you come here? and why today? This is a great partnership that we've built through the Miss Louisiana organization and we've been working them for working with them for about the past 15 years and so whenever I found out that I was able to come and to see this and to see how it works that was something I was really excited about and also my board of directors I was able to bring two of them with me and they wanted to experience this as well and to see how it is here and how it works and it's been really a surprising experience to see what you have here at Angola and how different it is from other places and you know even having the radio station the only one in the country it's something that the warden I think has really built a great program here. Oh yes he has and uh, thanks to Warden Beryl Kane for making the program what it is and you know the prison radio station served as a, uh, a platform for him to address the prison at one time so no matter what's going on inside of Angola Nobody can miss anything because we do live broadcasts and the warden comes here to talk to the population so everybody knows what's going on in Angola. So it's a very useful tool. Right. Uh, so here today, uh, your trip, you know, what you've seen, what you've learned, what you've experienced, what will you take back with you to, to your hometown, to your peers? Um, 
the most important thing I would say is that no matter your situation, no matter what your situation is, where you're at in life, to know that there's always hope. And so it doesn't matter if you're at Angola or if you're just at home in a situation where you think you can't get out of it or you think that there's nothing else that can go right for you to know that there always keep hope, always keep faith, and that was something else that I really admired here was that you have your interfaith chapels, and so to see people really turn their lives around no matter where they are at. Yes, you know, God God is a very big part of our prison experience here. Finding God have transformed the entire prison. Uh, Warden Burkane has what's called moral rehabilitation, you know, changing the guy from the inside out. If you're not going to change on the inside, no matter, you know, education or what kind of vocation that you experience, if you're the same guy on the inside, you know, uh, nothing is going to change. You're going to do the same thing. So you have to change from the inside out. That's what more rehabilitation is. And that's what so many of these guys have experienced. At one time, Angola was considered to be the bloodiest prison in America. And uh, Pastor Sidney says Angola still is the bloodiest prison in America because it's stained with the blood of Jesus Christ. Absolutely. And I think that is... Um, a persona that people have with Angola is that it is this terrible place and so to be able to come here and to see what it is that's something that I can take back with me and share with others about what Angola is and how it can turn people's lives around. Well, we truly thank you for that. Any last words before we conclude this interview? Thank you so much for having me on the air. You're a fantastic DJ and to everyone out there like I said before sending you prayers and blessings and it's been a blessing to be able to be here. What kind of response have you had from the inmates uh, to your program since you've been warden? Well, one response was we, we're, we, the violence is, is gone. And so we're really a model for the rest of the country. And we just had about, I guess, 60 wardens here trying to see if they could be more like we are. Texas is going to do this. And it's the Bible college thing that really changed the prison. It wasn't me, but it was the moral rehabilitation. Doesn't matter what religion, it matters that you're moral. The Red Hat had been built to house inmates like Charlie Frazier, and it's on the National Register of Historic Places, and it's one of our tour stops, all of our various tours stop here, and because you have to know where you've been in your history so you don't ever go back down that same road again. The way the building got its name, if you were an inmate that lived in the Red Hat, that meant that you were a very dangerous inmate. So your straw hat was taken, dipped in red dye, and that made for a better target out in the fields. Once they um, got Charlie Frazier back from Texas, he was welded in one of those cells for about five years. He died here in Angola in 1959. An old man, he still wasn't welded in the cell. We actually housed inmates in this building up until the uh, early 1970s, but uh, it goes to uh, show you really how brutal and bloody the prison was. Uh, if we had a buck or a work stoppage, it wasn't uncommon to have 10 or 15 inmates housed per cell. And uh, the way that worked is that the officer that put you in there was the officer that had to come and get you out. Certainly, it doesn't work like that today. But uh, it just goes to, uh, it remembers our past. It remembers how bloody and how violent and how horrible the prison was. And uh, we keep this on our tour circuit, and that's why Warden Kane was adamant that it be placed on the National Register so this building always remains the same so that you know where you've been in your history so you don't go back down that same road again. And the addendum building or the side building uh, was the first site of death row permanently housed here at Angola. And when you go through the building and come out the back end and walk back around, you'll see a large international harvester generator. That's the original generator that supplied the power for the first electrocutions here in Angola. This uh, is a replica of the electric chair. The original electric chair is in the museum. Uh, up until the uh, late 1940s, hanging was a means of execution. In the early 1950s, the legislature passed a law to make electrocution the means of execution. For a number of years, the electric chair was mobile and went from parish to parish carrying out the executions. In the late 1950s, the legislature passed another law to make it stationary here in Angola. So this was the first site of the electric chair. Then in the early 1991, the uh, legislature passed another law to make lethal injection the means of execution. 
And uh, so from about 1991 to current, lethal injection is the means of execution in Louisiana. But what you have here a lot of times is you have guys that will come here from, let's say, a parish unit. It was actually really surprising to me. I went in with, the, I guess, the general consensus of what people think Angola would be like. And then when I actually got here to see something totally different and different side to what you think of as torture and punishment in this horrible place and you get here and realize that the warden actually has really changed it in the last 16 years and making it a place where people come and can change their life for the better. What were some of the things that surprised you during your visit? Uh, how calm the inmates were. We actually went into death row and were able to walk uh, down by the cell blocks and to not have the inmates, you know, catcalling or yelling out or acting up there, really everyone's very calm and so that was something I was really surprised about and also that they have their interfaith chapels and to be able to see that they are able to go and um, practice their spiritual beliefs as well while they're here. What was your reaction to the visit by Miss Louisiana? I oh, was flabbergasted and just incredible visit because for the, the reasons of this that she that this prison is maybe worthy of her visit, but she gave it enough attention to come and it let the inmates show her that we are rehabilitated in many cases, in most cases, and we're not animals and violent creatures anymore like we were, that we've changed and we welcome you to be here and we're glad you're here and we're gonna be very respectful of you and they were. What is it that you're gonna remember the most about your visit here? Um, never to judge based on um, what you think a place may be like because, you know, you think of Angola, you think of a prison and people have a perception and something that they associate that with, which is horrible, and you actually come and you're able to see it for yourself. These people who are changing their lives, they're bettering themselves and going for higher education, they're um, building work ethic, and so to be able to come here and see that firsthand, and even if they do have a life sentence or a death sentence, to see that they're helping to make their lives better, and um, you look at these people as real people and not as criminals.